Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. So hello everybody, how are you today? It is Friday, it is time for another Dax Fridays, a new Dax function every Friday. Okay, with that said, um, in today's trick, I'm going to show you how to avoid bidirectional relationships, a trick to get the models working in a good way. It is a brute force approach. It is. And if you are sensible to things have to be technically correct, this is probably not a video for you, but um, it works. It works. And if you're a beginner, it's a lifesaver. So let me show you what I've done. Uh, this is the Northwind dataset that I fixed a little bit just to make it work for our purposes. And I have four tables. I have one table for products, type of product. I have one calendar. I have a sales table and a budget table. And both the sales table and budget table are year month level. Okay, so I don't have different granularities. This video is not about that. Both of them are uh, year month. So how does this model work? We have, obviously the calendar is connected to our sales table and to our budget table because we want to match the budget and the sales month by month by product because this budget table, let me show you, it actually has uh, the budget for each product each month. And nowadays that we're following everything with a high granularity, this is quite common actually. So this is what we're going to do. First of all, we want to create, you know, the table where we can follow products and budget against actual the product name, we're going to get it from our product table as usual. Make sure you hide product name from budget and from sales, okay? Mm. So this should not be there. Hide. Bye-bye. So now we have a product name and I have a measure that measures sales. Nothing we are there. Put in there. I have a measure that measures budget, which is basically the sum of budget. Nothing we are there. And as you can see, we have here each product name, sales and budget. And then we can put, I don't know, let's do a matrix and then put year month there on the column, please. There you go. And then to, to make this a little bit more visible, let's put year 1998. Instead of year month, let's do year quarter, fiscal year quarter. So. So now it's easier to see. So we have a list of products. We have um, for quarter three and quarter four, total sales and total budget. And then you can do the variance. You know, you can subtract the one from the other one to see if you're ahead or not, or you're spending too much or not, basically. So that works beautifully, right? So what's the issue, which these? If I now put the category name that is in our sales table, because our sales table looks like this. We have uh, year, month, and then product name, sales, and then the category for the product. And I put the category name in the rows because we want to know, obviously, how we are doing for each category. Let me put this. I actually like this plus minus a lot. When I said I did it in the beginning, I think it's great. It just makes it visually that you have a hierarchy. So here we have the bridges and then we have the sales and the budget. As you can see here, if we go up, suddenly our total budget uh, measure is not working. Why? Well, every time you see that, it means that something is wrong with your model, okay? So the only way to fix this is to go back here and to try to figure out what's going on. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, so I will cut to the chase and we will explain what's going on in more detail in another video. We're already at five minutes. So basically what is happening is that the, table is, the tables are not being filtered correctly. And as you can see, budget and sales has a many, many on both sides, which in my mind, that means that the tables are locked. They can be filtered, but they don't filter anything. Okay, so every time you see like many, many, it's a locked table. 
And when we had a um, field from products, because products can actually filter other tables, it was filtering correctly. But now that we have here a uh, category name on here on sales, you'll see that it's just not, category cannot filter any other table. It requires a bidirectional relationship. Saying it very quickly. So this one needs to be filtered. The thing is that if you know a little bit about modeling and about, a little bit about directional relationships, you will probably guess which one it is. But here is the brute, the brute force method. You have the products in there. So these two, one of these needs to be bidirectional. If you don't even know that, don't care. You can start here and say, okay, what happens? You can double click on the thing. Come on. And then you can put blindly that. I said, oh, that is a bi-directional relationship. What happens? Does it fix my model? No. Okay, go back. Click in here. Why is my Power BI so slow? Maybe I have to save it. Single. So that wasn't to, you have to, you know, go back. Oh my God, I can't have it like this. Let me save. I'll see if you fix it. Okay, so we go to the next one. It is products and sales. And we click on here and we try. We, say, we have no idea what's going on with the relationships. We're new at the, in Power BI, but we know it has to be both bi-directional relationships so the tables can actually be filtered. And uh, here we have it. It is working, you see? So now we don't have the same number everywhere. We actually have the number. So that means that we need to set this relationship bi-directional. And then you probably say, oh, great, I've got it. I leave it bi-directional. Don't. Here's where the trick comes. If now you know which relationship needs to be bi-directional because it works, you go here, you grab the total budget, and we're going to do a small modification to the measure so we can make it work and remove the bi-directional relationship. So we go here and new measure. And then we write budget bi-directional and then we put calculate total budget budget because this is the one that is not working right and then shift enter and we do cross filter and cross filter i have a video on that i'm going to link down below but cross filter basically allows you to virtually turn you know bi-directional relationships on or an off, uh, or relationships are all. It's really, really good. You start from the many side, and the many side, if you remember, it was both the sales and the budget table that were locked. Those are the ones that are the many side. So we go to sales product name, and then we go to um, a product product name, and now we say set that to both. So what we're doing is exactly the same as we did in the model, but we're doing it virtually. So this measure, when it's calculated, it will turn on, return the results, and then turn off. Okay, so budget BI, we put it in there. And as you can see, it's giving us the same result. It means that it's working. We're going to format it correctly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Probably my computer is going to crash in like, I mean, or two. Hopefully, I, I managed to make the video before. Um, and now you go back to the modeling pane. You grab that one, double click, and put single. Now it's single. Go back, and as you can see, total budget does not work again. But our budget BI, you know, the bidirectional, it works. So you remove that one. 
And there you go. Okay, so this is a brute force way to know which relationships should be bidirectional and instead of leaving them bidirectional in the model, just create a measure that turns it on when needed. Okay, so I hope this dirty trick is useful. This doesn't mean that you should not learn about data modeling. You have to learn about data modeling. It, it is a must. But if you're a beginner, sometimes you don't need to know anything. A little bit brute force approach works also. So turn on, turn off, check which one you need to turn on and then turn it on on the measure instead of the model. And then you leave the model as it should without any bidirectional relationships. So with that said, have a great weekend, enjoy your free time, and I'll see you again on Monday as always. Okay, take care. Bye.